Welcome to Learn the Electrics and another Tech Tips video. Something that is misunderstood by some electricians is the electromagnetic effects of current in metallic consumer units. And we hope to address that here. The questions that are often asked are, what are electromagnetic effects? What causes them? What are the problems? And how do we reduce them? If you look in the wiring regs, BS 7671 18th edition, page 136, we will find regulation 521.5.1, titled Ferromagnetic Enclosures, Electromagnetic Effects. And this regulation tells us the conductors of an AC circuit installed in a ferromagnetic enclosure shall be arranged so that all the line conductors and the neutral conductor, if any, and the appropriate protective conductor are contained within the same enclosure. It then goes on to say, where such conductors enter a ferrous enclosure, they shall be arranged such that the conductors are only collectively surrounded by ferromagnetic material. We are showing here just the base of a standard metal consumer unit. Along this underside, there are usually a row of knockouts. The metal is semi-sheared, so that if we strike the knockout sharply with the hammer, we will have a nice round hole of 20mm diameter. Just perfect to install a 20mm compression gland, or squash gland, as they are often called. We can install our 20mm squash gland, insert our cable, job done. Except... This is a single conductor entering a ferromagnetic enclosure and not what the regulations want. We have left the compression gland off in the next few drawings for clarity and to better show what is happening. Each of the supply conductors, in this case the mains tails and the main earth conductor, can have a hole each and many electricians install it in this way. They look really neat but we have just created a big problem for ourselves. Each conductor is passing through its own hole. Each conductor is in its own ferromagnetic enclosure, and we cannot do this with ferrous materials such as steel or any iron-rich magnetic material. If we consider only the incoming phase or line conductor for just a moment, where the cable passes through the metallic enclosure the current in the conductor will generate electromagnetic waves that spread into the metal of the consumer unit. These waves, or eddy currents, are so called because if we spread iron filings onto the metal surface, they will form patterns that look like whirlpools or eddies of water. This electromagnetic effect will start to generate a heat buildup in the metal of the consumer unit. As we know, heat is one thing that we do not want in the electrical circuits. Our cables generally have a limiting temperature of 70 degrees centigrade and are more efficient the cooler that they are. Our consumer unit will have a neutral conductor in addition to the line conductor, so current flows in and current flows out. And any residual current or fault currents that flow along the earth conductor will also add to the electromagnetic effects, as each have their own ferromagnetic enclosure. Notice the directions of the eddy currents as shown by the purple arrows. Some flow clockwise and some flow anti-clockwise. As there is an in current and an out current, they are flowing in opposite directions. The eddy currents also circulate in opposite directions. And at some points, there is a build-up or increase in the eddy current flow where they meet. Where the eddy currents are in close proximity, there is an increase in the heat that is generated in the metalwork, especially with the supply conductors, the meter tails, if the circuit is drawing significant current. As well as increased eddy currents and heating between line and neutral, there may also be residual currents or fault currents flowing along the earth conductor and they will also generate additional heat. The solution, and the regulations say that we should always do it this way, is to install all the conductors for a circuit through the same hole in any ferromagnetic enclosure. It will sometimes be necessary to cut a larger hole in the consumer unit, 
perhaps 40 millimetres or greater, to accommodate a larger compression gland. Do not leave any unprotected surfaces that may chafe and damage the cable sheathing. Use some sort of protection and ensure the cables are securely fixed in position. Now, because the eddy currents are flowing in opposite directions, they will cancel each other out. The net result should be close to zero, with the result that there is no heating effect. But how do we know that they flow in opposite directions? Well, that was the work of a 19th century scientist. James Clark Maxwell was a Scottish scientist from the 1800s. He formulated a theory of magnetic radiation. He described how electromagnetic waves circulate around a current carrying conductor and he even predicted the existence of radio waves. Maxwell's right hand rule shows us how these electromagnetic fields circulate or you can use the much easier to remember screw analogy which is what we will show you here. The direction of rotation of these electromagnetic fields can be found by imagining that you want to insert a screw into a piece of wood. If you turn a screw so that it moves into the piece of wood we say that you are screwing it in and the direction that you turn or rotate the screwdriver to do this is the direction that the electromagnetic fields circulate. So current flowing in will cause the fields to rotate clockwise. If you now want to take the screw out, what direction do you turn the screwdriver? It is rotated anti-clockwise. This means that current flowing out will cause the fields to rotate anti-clockwise. Current flowing in, away from you, will cause the fields to rotate clockwise and current flowing out, towards you, will cause the fields to rotate anti-clockwise. The same principle must be applied to steel or ferromagnetic conduit or trunking systems. A single conductor on its own should not be installed in steel conduit for any AC circuit. Steel armoured single cables are considered to be ferrous enclosures in their own right and for the same reasons should not be used for AC circuits. Singles in armoured cable should use aluminium armouring as this is non-ferrous and does not generate eddy currents in AC circuits. For the same reasons as before, we should not put the line and neutral conductors in separate sections or runs of steel conduit. When using a ferromagnetic or steel conduit and trunking, all the conductors for a circuit must be within the same enclosure, the same section. If we do this, we will reduce or eliminate any electromagnetic effects in that part of the installation. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable, and that you have been able to add more knowledge to your mental toolbox. Please click on the like button below and by clicking on subscribe, you will have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us too and we do appreciate it and it does make all our effort worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. We are constantly uploading companion articles to our videos onto our website and these can be viewed at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.